talk about um, is just to give you a taste of what you can do in Python. Um, usually people come to you and say, oh, Python is great, very uh, expressive, dynamic, but it's slow. So this, is, uh, this lecture is uh, um, to give you ammunition, what you can tell them back. Uh, I won't go into any details, it's just to whet your appetites. Uh, so don't expect any, any depth. All the examples, if you want to run them yourself, to you know, go into more details than what I will show you here, uh, this is uh, the URL. It comes from this book, that's a companion of the uh, O'Reilly book, uh, High Performance uh, Python. Uh, this is uh, the companion, uh, uh, all, the, all the, the things in this book are in, in here. And if you want to go into some more details about Cyton, this these two books are recommended. So how do we make code run faster? First, uh, obviously, let it do less work. So we use good algorithms, we reduce the amount of data that, uh, that we use, uh, it will run faster. Uh, and the easiest way to do uh, this, uh, once, once we did uh, the, the first things, what we can do later is to get it to run at the machine code level. It uh, increases the efficiency of specialized code, uh, reduce the number of instructions that the CPU has to execute, and how do we do it? Uh, okay, we will, sh we will see how we can do it, but uh, the, the things that we want to uh, uh, get from this uh, time together, uh, that we f first we want to uh, try to get better algorithms, then uh, we will see that we have some options in, in Python that we can do just-in-time uh, compilations, again, uh, opposite uh, ahead-of-time compilation. And then uh, something that I will not talk here, but if you are doing something very, very specialized, you can call also uh, libraries or functions, whatever, from other languages, mainly C, C++, and Fortran. This is what Python allows us to do. What I will talk about here is how to do this without losing all the great benefits of Python, which are the uh, expressivity of, of, of the language and the flexibility that you get from it being a dynamic language. All the things that we will uh, see today are for CPU-bound processes, Python scripts. If you have IO-bound processes, even if you have CPU-bound problem, but it has uh, uh, sections which are I/O bounded. What, nothing that I will show you here will help you. Um, that's that's not the, the. What we are going to see here is how to uh, optimize uh, CPU bounded uh, sections. If if you see that uh, uh, you have your problem is is actually I/O bounded then you have to rethink what you're doing. And many of the previous lectures talked about and using parallelism or whatever, but not what I'm going to show you here. Uh, in a moment, we will see a nice graph to see how, how we are going to tackle this problem. Um, but once uh, you do the first thing that we will uh, do, which is profiling, sometimes when you, just when you do profiling, you will see the, the hotspots um, the, the bottlenecks in your code, which will uh, steer you in the right direction to maybe change the algorithm, make it better. Okay, what we are uh, going to take from this uh, uh, 20 minutes? How to get Python to run at a lower level, uh, as lower level code, closer to to the machine, to the machine code. What is the difference between just-in-time and ahead-of-time compilations? What are the Python codes that can benefit from uh, being run at a lower, at a lower level uh, uh, stage in uh, opposite to what cannot? And uh, uh, how annotations of, of the code that you have helps the code to run faster? Uh, I, I won't talk of all the options Python ecosystem has. I, I'll, I'll concentrate on these five technologies. We can have uh, compilations that goes to C or C++ 
And these are the tools, Cyton, Shedskin, and Python. There are uh, tools like Numba, which is, I think uh, in the morning the first uh, lecture talked about, and they use LLVM instead of the, okay. And uh, then the PyPy, which actually replaces the virtual machine, the Python virtual machine. So what, what do we get? Uh, Cyton is, is a very, very uh, popular, at least for now, most solutions where we want to get uh, speed benefits will use uh, Cyton. It can do both NumPy and uh, regular uh, Python code. Uh, unfortunately, you need to know some, at least understand some C. If you, if you just come from, you never did any, any compiled languages, and especially C or C++, and you just know Python, there will be a bit of a learning curve. Shedskin uh, is actually something that does automatic conversion to C++, but it doesn't do NumPy. Uh, Numba, uh, in the morning uh, there was a long talk about Numba. Uh, it's geared mainly for NumPy. Python, is, it does both NumPy and Python, and it's a very nice tool, very, very new tool. Uh, and then PyPy, um, a just-in-time uh, compiler, you get all the benefits virtually for free. You, you have to do nothing. Okay, which is best for you? Uh, two things to consider. Is, is my code uh, adaptable to this technique, and is my, uh, are the people in my team, uh, can they accept this thing? As, as we said, if you, if you use Cyton, you have to learn some C, or at least understand some C, and uh, so um, this is things to consider, and also each of these tools has some uh, uh, dependencies, which you may or may not want to uh, suffer. Okay, so where do you use each, uh, each tool? So Python code, if you have no NumPy, just uh, batteries included, so these are the three. And if you have NumPy, the other three. Uh, currently, all these tools support 2.7. Some of them start to migrate to 3 something. 3.2, some even above. If we do a compilation of uh, this uh, suitable pieces of uh, code, then several orders of magnitude. Uh, and with tools that don't actually get you to do some uh, very much work, this is impressive. Which will uh, benefit from this uh, um, technique? First, we said mathematical code. Obviously, it runs only in the CPU, no I.O. This, is, this will benefit. If we have loops that repeat the same operation, it means that we don't change in the middle of a loop from uh, some A being an integer to A being a list, then this is something that the compiler can say, ah, it's always an integer. I can uh, optimize it to be a C integer. If, if you create uh, many temporary objects, this is another thing that the compiler can optimize. Uh, what you cannot, uh, uh, what will not benefit from these techniques, is uh, if you if you call uh, external libraries. Some of these libraries are already in C, so there's no speed gains that you can do. Some of them, uh, the the compilers will not know what to do when when you call those. Uh, we talked about I/O, and uh, okay, this is something that only. Uh, scientists will care about, but uh, if, if you are using vectorized uh, NumPy, uh, don't expect any, any uh, speed gains from this technique. It will not run faster from uh, handwritten uh, C, but it will not run fa uh, much slower than C, unless you have excellent uh, C programmers. And now I have to contradict myself. If you looked at the book I, I, I told you in the second slide, uh, it gives her a, a very nice uh, example of where uh, Google programmers wrote in C++ uh, uh, machine learning uh, system. And when uh, he ran the technique that I will present here, he was able, from Python, to get four times as fast as those obviously good programmers from Google. 
So what I wrote in this uh, um, slide is not all the truth. It's most of the truth. Uh, IBM gave a very nice comparison of, of speeds of many, uh, many um, uh, processes in various languages. Uh, the, most of them, sorry, are what we will talk here about, uh, Python, Numba, and Cyton. So this is uh, also a graph from this book that I told you about. How do we tackle and how do we uh, implement these techniques? So the first thing we want to know is where to concentrate our efforts. We, just, we don't just take the, the, the VI uh, screen and start uh, optimizing. That's, that's not how it's done. What you want to do is to do profiling, and we will talk about some profilers. Uh, you want to do uh, profiling, know where your uh, uh, places that should be uh, um, optimized, then you will uh, um, try to do better algorithms on those spots. If this doesn't give you enough uh, um, benefits, then you do the techniques that we will talk here about, but you have to remember not to get to this plateau. So, you know, you don't want to overwork, do much work without much gain. This is what the examples that we will see will show you the orders of magnitude that we can expect. And we will also look about, of, um, we will look at how to implement OpenMP, which is how to parallelize on multiple calls. When we compile ahead of time, we get uh, best speedups uh, uh, because there's no uh, call start timing that when, when you do a just-in-time uh, compilation, at the first time that you run the code, the, this compilation has to run, so this time is added. If you do it more than once, then the time is not. Well, One thing that I want to, to show you here, and we will use it later, um, as, as, as I said, uh, we all know that Python is dynamic, which means that the same uh, variable, the same object here, v, in one type, in one part of the code, it can be uh, just a, an integer, and uh, in another part, it can be a complex number, which means that if we want to, to do some operations on it, uh, they may not be the same, even though the, the function may, may be called the same. So the apps, if in the case of the uh, negative integer, it will just make it into a positive integer. If we do the apps on, on a complex number, this is what we have to do. Cyton uh, creates a, an hybrid language, which is a little C and mostly uh, Python, which means that you have to teach your team how to do some C, but this is not really a problem because you don't have to change the whole uh, of your, all your code, but as, as we said, you do profiling, you know just the type of places, those stanzas that will benefit, and this will do so. Not all your team will, will have to, to do this, uh, to endure this uh, learning curve. Some, some bullets here. We will see how to do a, a, a compiled extension model, which we can call from Python. Uh, we will need to uh, create a setup.py uh, script that will do the compilation for us, like you use make in, in, if you use C, for instance. Um, the, the annotation, are, they look like C. Uh, there's also, I will not talk about, but you can actually do uh, annotation which are pure Python. Okay, what, the example that we are going to see here is how to do a, a fractal uh, uh, analysis, uh, the Julia set. And to do this in Cyton, we have to use three files. One is uh, the function which is, will be a mathematical function uh, that we will optimize. This will be the Python uh, that will call this function, and this is the setup that will actually create the module that we can call from the julia1.py. Julia this is a function. Currently, this is uh, just a py uh, file that we rename to uh, pyx. That's it. If you look here, there's nothing other than pure Python. And this is how we call it in the julia.py. We import calculate. Uh, if we look here, it's called calculate uh, z. 
So we import the module calculate, and inside the module calculate, we uh, execute the calculate z uh, function. And now, when we run setup.py, it will create on Unix Linux, it will create an, a, a shared object library. And uh, on Windows, it will create what is called a PYD, which is kind of a DLL. And if you are using SIGWIN, it will actually call it DL a DLL. So when, when, we run this, uh, uh, when we run the setup pi, it will do all this, and it will create the standard object if we are on, on Unix. We saw that this, is just, this was just a pure Python code, nothing. There was no annotation, and even with this, we got some for free, uh, just writing this setup.py, uh, this uh, speed gains. How do we know what to uh, concentrate of? Um, the Cyton has a minus A, which means, uh, which, which uh, stands for uh, minus annotation, uh, which will show us uh, the lines that are mostly going into the Python uh, virtual machine. If it's more yellow, then it goes more into the virtual machine. If it's white, it's pure C, and if it's between, then it's between. Ah, okay, uh, one more thing. Uh, if you double-click on it, you will see actually the C uh, API codes, uh, C API lines that, that uh, uh, Cyton generates from the Python now, as I told you, the first thing we have to do is profiling, and when we did the profiling, when I did the profiling here, line 8, which is this line, uh, is get, gets executed 30 million uh, times. And it's inside the loop, so we know that if we concentrate here, uh, we might actually gain some, some speed. Uh, also, line 6 and 7, uh, they are, they are uh, being executed only a million times, but also they are inside uh, of a loop. We'll do it later. Uh, as I said, we should concentrate on doing some things which are inside loops, uh, um, things which uh, lines of Python that uh, reference either list uh, objects or, or array objects, and math. And if you look here, the first thing that we will do is we will uh, Annotate here, it looks like C. If, if any of you uh, coded in C, this looks like C. So uh, the thing is, once we do this, this stops being a Python code. So if you want to debug it into the, in the interactive uh, um, uh, Python, uh, forget about it. It, it. You will get errors. Once we did this, uh, uh, once we did these uh, two lines, the annotation, we can see that some of the lines uh, stop being yellow and are now white, which means that they are pure uh, C. But uh, the 30 million uh, times lines that I talked before, it's still yellow. Even with just these two uh, uh, things, and if we also gave it, uh, um, if we just said that the Z Z ZS and the CS are lists, Python lists, yeah, not C lists, <laughs> there's no such thing, uh, then we get down to uh, 13 seconds, about, so on my machine. And if you recall, uh, I talked about what you can do is also change your algorithms. So. Uh, here, if you recall, we, uh, we had an abs that did an abs on uh, a comp complex number, wh where we, like we, I showed you in the example of two abs. So what we can actually do is actually change uh, our way of, of dealing with it, and instead of doing some uh, square roots, we just uh, eliminate them by... by uh, uh, taking this to the power of two. And now the code, instead of using apps, we, are, we have this thing. And with these things, this is what we get. Two orders of magnitude. This is nice. I told you that we needed three files. One is a function, one is a, the Python code that calls the function, and one is a setup.py. Not always do you need it. If, if you are doing something that are quite simple, they don't call C and uh, some other things, you can actually just use these two uh, lines and then 
you import this, uh, this uh, hello world is the shared object will be created when, when we have, you have this, the shared object will be created here without needing any setup.py and okay, it ran and what this object had, it just had print hello world. Uh, uh, the way to do parallelizing uh, using OpenMP in, in the Cyton, what we can do here is instead of using range, when we have loops, we use p range, and uh, in the uh, open uh, in the setup.py we say that we want to use open MP, and then we will also say that we can release the gil, which means that these pieces of code here, if you can see, it says with no gil, and then it uses p range here instead of range. So this means that. Uh, uh, Cyton will be able to uh, uh, break this uh, uh, code and send it to different cores uh, using the OpenMP. When you are in a Nogil uh, stanza, in a Nogil uh, block, don't call any Python objects. You, you want to call only C, C uh, variables, otherwise you will crash and burn. Okay, this is, uh, as, as I said, in the setup.py, you have to say that in the compilation and in the linking, you want to use the OpenMP library, so you can do... You can break the work that uh, OpenMP will do either uh, with, with different scheduling uh, approaches. Uh, you can say static, which means that it will take the, the code that you have and it will try to break it uh, into uh, the same, same size chunks, which means that one chunk may be uh, finished while the others are still working, so you are not utilizing your uh, uh, resources cleverly. If you use this uh, scheduling, it will break it into much smaller chunks. Uh, I, I will not go now into the difference, but much smaller chunks, which means that uh, probably all your cores will be uh, utilized. Okay, shed skin. Shedskin is actually, uh, it, it compiles to C++, and it does the, the annotation automatically. Okay, let's see how it does it. What we do here, we don't have to do any annotation here. All we have to do is just create a if name equals main, and uh, we give it uh, an example of how we call the, the functions that we want, we want it to uh, uh, compile. And that's all. Uh, it will create a, a, a C++ intermediate uh, file. It will compile this file, but the file will stay behind. So if you want to actually take the C++ file and optimize it as a C++, then you're OK. And then it will create also an annotation file. This is actually how the C++ uh, looks like. It's much more civilized than what the, the C API creates. Okay, and the, this is the automatic annotation that you will get. You see, each of the variables here, shed skin will tell us that it uh, uh, thinks that this is an int, this is a complex, and so on and so forth. So this is a way, uh, this, this is a place that it may be that shed skin actually made a mistake. So this is a place where you want to check and see if all the automatic annotations are correct. And uh, the calling is all virtually the same as, as in Cyton. We include the, the library, and then we call it here. This is a speed gain that you can expect on my machine. So instead of 26 seconds, 0 0.77. If, if uh, we do the changing of the abs, taking out the, the square root, we get down to 0 0.32 which is only a bit uh, smaller than Cyton. Why is it slower than Cyton? If you look at the times that the, this, on this uh, example we get, virtually they are creating, Cyton and Shedskin are creating the same uh, machine code. The only difference is that we have, Shedskin is using a different, uh, different memory, so we have to copy two million uh, complex number and copy out one million. So this is the difference in, in speeds between Cyton and Shedskin. Uh, Python, okay, let's see how we do the 
in, in Python, what we have to do is just give it the calling of the function with the, the uh, variable that it takes as a comment, which means that this code is actually a Python code. You can uh, use all the tools that you, you know in Python and it will run, because all the things that Python needs is just uh, a Python comment. Okay, PyPy. Um, PyPy basically is a just-in-time compiler that uh, you have to do nothing. Uh, it, uh, uh, it uses a, a different, uh, some different things from CPython. Uh, for instance, the uh, garbage collection is not uh, the same as in CPython, uh, but it uses a mark and sweep, which you have to be careful because some things that you are expecting because you know how it works in CPython will not work the same in PyPy. So use whiz directive, for instance, if you are uh, working with files. There is, they have a project that uh, tries to uh, eliminate the GIL. And uh, if you want to profile, these are the two tools. You can see which uh, tools you can use for which uh, work.